I'm definitely one of those people. <laughs> when I have to like have an appointment or a work shift or something later in the day, I definitely just sit around all day worrying and waiting for it and not really being productive. It sounds like I'm exaggerating when I say it, but it seems we're doing a little road trip, which means leaving the cat. That is the thing that fills me up with knots the most because she's on a wet food diet and she hasn't been alone for three years. I have commission this week that just kind of came out of nowhere. I have to meet this person in public and you know it's paid by e-transfer but he hasn't paid yet and I have to leave in an hour. I have been binge watching too many like Sam and Colby haunted house videos in anticipation of our trip <laughs> that it's gotten me into a very like paranoid, very high stress kind of like state. I didn't really have any red flags up until today at all. Like I think I did a good job with this commission and stuff. It clicked something in my head where I'm just like, like they made up this ridiculously elaborate ruse to lure me out into a quiet place alone to do something. Like I feel like this is the height of my anxiety leaving up to this point. It's supposed to be going away and having fun. Yeah, so today I'm just stressed out and I, I can't think of anything else except all the possibilities of what's gonna happen when I arrive at the train station in a couple of hours. And so I'm very excited to be done with that. The world isn't really out to get you. But right now, like today, I feel like the world is absolutely out to get me. And I have literally no reason to be stressed. But it does mean that I'm going to have no YouTube videos for a while and I don't think anyone's going to notice. What we're doing is we are taking a bus and we are going to meet them in Kamloops. And then we're going to a very interesting hotel near Revelstoke. And it was featured in one of those ghost hunting videos, so I'm very excited. <laughs> and then I think we're going to go to Golden Drumheller. Uh, for a few days because my sister wants to see dinosaurs and I'm interested to see a city that I visited when I was like six. I think the Three Valley Lake Chateau was my favorite place to stay. <laughs> it's a big old hotel. It didn't have any Wi-Fi or air conditioning, and not too many amenities. It was very isolated. And this place was featured in some kind of ghost hunting show. I couldn't actually find it to watch it. But the whole building is just kind of steeped in a slightly broken down creepy vibe. Although I don't know if it was intentionally so, but my favorite thing about this place is how much there was to look at. They had their own um, ghost town, which seemed a little bit like a dumping ground for all the vintage stuff in BC. Get the fire. That's just all the, I guarantee you. Uh oh. Old time you thought that's old it had these old rail cars that you can just wander through and they were sort of uh, staged as if they were still in use, but you know, many years oh, ago. Oh, you can sleep in those days. You can sleep in this. <laughs> There's more train back here. Here, whoa. It's insane. Uh -huh. Everything was kind of covered in a layer of dust, which I think that could have been cleaned up. It would have been a little bit better. We can go into the ghost town as many times as we wanted, whenever we wanted. Need to see that. Oh no. <laughs> there are no ghosts here, just mannequins. <laughs> which is worse. <laughs> The most unpleasant part of the ghost town, other than the dust, was probably the mannequins. They have seen better days, and again, I'm not sure <laughs> if it was on purpose to make them look as creepy as possible. This is, this is good. I like this. More mannequins. Oh, good.
It's open door push gate. There's always something. Adam, you are far too happy. <laughs> Ooh, rocks. Look at this uncomfortably happy madam. Oh no, oh no, please. <laughs> oh, no one's been in here for years. Look at the dust, yeah. <laughs> look like this what what did they do to you that's exactly what going to the dentist is like very cool yeah it's wooden they used to do them that's some canadian wow. shit <laughs> nice do you think this door is supposed to be open but there was a real gift shop in the ghost town that had a real person in it and a real cat who they say has become a little bit famous because of his feature on this <laughs> ghost hunting show called Stranded. His name is Rusty. What he's doing? What's he doing? <gasps> oh, let him go! And there were just so many objects and vignettes that I could save for later in case I wanted to just practice in my sketchbook and draw something. next day we backtracked a little bit to check out this waterfall where we were eaten alive by mosquitoes. And then we went to check out Revelstoke, which is the most powerful city name I've ever heard. <laughs> Got some beautiful landscape shots and this bridge that made very uh, unnerving rickety noises when trucks went across it. They set these up. There we go. Cute little burb. Nah, it's just a burb. In a bird house. A moose. We tried to go to the hydro dam in Revelstoke, but we had arrived too late in the day. They took our money, but then they kicked us out after 10 minutes because I guess they were closing. <laughs> so later on that night, me and John broke off their family and decided to take a pleasant stroll around the ghost town and the hotel. There's nobody in here. Unattended with vehicles. Hmm. <laughs> Play some neck and neck. We wanted to give ourselves a nice and ghostly spooky time. And some of the train cars were actually still set up for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> What's this thing? Oh no. And so we got ourselves in a nice little spooky mood before wandering around the hallways in this hotel to really soak in the quirky architecture and get ourselves nice and unnerved. Why does it look like this? <laughs> Where does this go? Nowhere. This building turned out to be more of a maze than we expected. There are tall towers and upper floors that we couldn't figure out how to get to. Well, I guess it, the hallway ends before that. And there were just so many people in this building that we couldn't really get ourselves into unnerved, a spooky well, in a state. There's just so many you know, children screaming and <laughs> people talking everywhere. The sun wouldn't go down soon enough. But we did find a fun little hallway right off the pool area that nobody clearly ever uses. The worst hallway I've ever seen. Oh my god, it is. What? What the hell? 
I'm a little spooked by that. I don't like that the doors are missing. What is this? What animal would, what does that, a raccoon? We tried to go back to our room, but we kept getting lost and confused as the building is built sort of into a hill, I think, and we kept running into dead ends and illogical floor placements. What? How are we on our floor, but there's two dead ends? How is the second floor below the first floor? What the hell? So long you flight. Not exactly. The next stop was in Golden, where we did a bunch of, you know, little minor touristy crap. Going over the pedestrian bridge, checking out some older buildings. We decided to try the huge sky bridge that claims to be two of the longest or tallest suspension pedestrian bridges in the country. There's like a whole zip line and climbing stuff we did not do. I think in a year or two this place is going to be sick. My mom really wanted to go check out Lake Louise, but apparently it's like a whole Disney quest to visit that city. <laughs> we instead did a day trip to Banff, but this is where we finally ran into a magpie. He's coming this way. He's very good. Just see him in the sun. He's got a thing. Fine going. I don't know. I just wanted to see a magpie. <gasps> Poor guy. Talk. I also kind of wanted to see the cave and basin display. It claims to be the first historical reserve in Canada. They really, really wanted to save this little hot spring cave. And I just wanted to visit it because somebody on Google reviewed it and said that they used to be able to go swimming in this little cave until an endangered snail moved in and then you're not allowed to swim in the cave anymore. And I just thought it was adorable, this idea. It's obviously a lot of snails. <laughs> But I prefer to think of it as just like one snail taking over. And I'm kind of glad he did because I would not put myself in this water. It smelled so bad. There he is, the endangered snail. Took over the pool. I don't know if I'd want to swim in that. Who on earth sees this and smells this and goes, damn, oh, I'm hop in there. I like the colors. The colors are nice, yeah. Oh, oh you think it's like slimy feeling? Yeah, absolutely. Oh god. Hey, slightly radioactive water. Nasty. 
wonder how far this goes. Mysterious cave. The gift shop here didn't have any snail related merch and so I carved one out of a piece of wood. I wasn't able to take it with me so I will have to carve myself a snail of my own when I get home. It was a longer drive between Banff and Drumheller. I'm not used to not having mountains in the background. I've never felt so far away from home. And my vision of Drumheller was having these tall hills all around and I thought, how does it go from a flat land into hills so like quickly? And that's when we realized that the Badlands are actually a hole in the earth that you drive into. And there's something really deeply unsettling about that. The Terrell Dinosaur Museum was very well kept and up to date, and I think at the end of this week I was starting to feel a little overwhelmed by all of the different things that we were seeing and experiencing. I was taking so many video clips, I was taking so many photos as a way to you know, gather a lot of reference shots, inspiration, filling my creative well, and just really, you know, sucking the marrow out of life. But it was just such a lot to chew at once, and at the end of the week I was shrugging at the hillsides after a while as if they weren't anything special, and it felt a little alarming to me because I feel like my sense of wonder in the natural world was so important to me, like it's the only thing that we really have that no one can take away from us. And so this was kind of good to have that experience because now it sort of renews my um, intention in my artwork and stuff to really value the small things to have wonder in a tiny roadside wildflower or and trying to experience life as the animals that we are. Boys. Hey. Come here, little boy. He's screaming. He's screaming. Oh! <laughs> Come scream. Come scream. Oh, yeah, you're very sweet. Hmm. <laughs> He's blinking. Everybody's good. Everybody? Everybody's grumpy? You're so mad? <laughs> 